Welcome back. Think global economic crisis, think uncertainty. Customers, of course, keeping their wallets firmly in their back pockets. Businesses scratching their heads over that most fundamental of fundamentals, making the sale. So just what is the secret? Well, Ari Galper has spent over a decade devising selling strategies for global companies, including UPS and Qualcomm. He's the brains behind Unlock the Game, a new take on the traditional notion of selling, and he joins me now. Ari, uh, warm welcome to you. Recession-proof selling. Yes. Just tell me about this element of trust, because some companies right at this moment seem broke. Where's the trust in a General Motors? How do you elicit trust if you're trying to sell their cars? Well, I think the issue is with traditional selling is that we always focus on making the sale. Think about what we get from the customer. What I figured out was if you focus on building trust first with the customer, the sale will happen afterwards. So it's ironic by not thinking about closing someone or making the sale, that actual, actually creates trust and makes a sale. So my whole concept is if you focus on authenticity and trust first, the sale will come second. But my real concern sure. is if the product itself that you're trying to sell yes. is broke. Uh, is, is there a notion of something being so bust that it can't be? Uh, absolutely. You have to have a quality product that has to be able to meet, solve a problem and meet a customer's need. That's number one requirement. So you can't really rehabilitate? Uh, a, uh, absolutely not. You can't? You, I mean, to be able to rehabilitate something that's already broken and try to sell it back to someone, it's just, there, there's something that's not going to happen there. There's because a, it was like an, an airline like Aeroflot, they brought a McKinsey's and said rebrand, rebrand, yes. and there must be a way of selling that, even though it crashes every five well, minutes. It, it, okay, well, it, there's a way for it not to crash and to rebrand it with a whole new perspective, absolutely. But you have to have some consistency in the market and some type of integrity that makes the customer feel comfortable trying it again. How many people are, are locked into this notion and how many people just fall back on that rejection notion? They walk away and they give up. The people you talk to, have they got the will to do it? Well, this is the problem, is that people, the minute they start selling something, get rejected, they walk away. What they don't realize is rejection is triggered by what they're saying or doing, a behavior they're saying or doing. So what I figured out was there are certain things you can do to remove rejection and still make the sale. Tell me about this idea about selling uh, uh, the, the, the first meeting rather yes. than thinking you'll close it and that's yes. where really you get the traction. Explain that difference. Yes. So the whole unlock the game mindset that I created was the idea is when you meet a customer, your goal is not to try and sell them. Your goal is to first solve their problem, build trust first. If you can have that relationship first, mm -hmm. what happens ironically is they trust you enough to tell you what they're thinking and what the truth is, then they buy. So I've reversed the process by saying, let's not focus on the sale first, let's focus on the trust first. The trust then equals a sale. Now, explain how this works in the online world, because you are in this business as well, yes. and yet people are bombarded online with so many different offerings. Yes. How do you become the one that they trust over another? Great question. I mean, if you go to a website now, what happens is you feel it's, it's a cold page. There's graphics, text, and you don't trust the person or the website. So we figured out that if you actually can talk to someone live on your website through, say, the live chat medium and connect with them in a human-to-human, -human, one -on one-on-one way Assuming live. Assuming you can get a connection. Absolutely. Assuming <laughs> you have a connection. Well, our, in Australia, that could be a bit debatable. That's true, but yeah. it's getting better. Yeah. But there's a way, actually, that we created to actually connect live with a customer on a website called Chatwise where you can build trust, make sales like a real store. Is it... Is it local, though? Because people still like the FaceTime. I mean, what about that concept? Even if it's, you know, what a webcam experience, does that really cut the mustard? Well, it's actually not even that. It's just simply text, live chat. People feel safe clicking a button that says, how can I help you? Yeah. And talking to a live person, they feel safe because they can tell the person, ask questions, and really just get into the conversation. Does that work on certain products up to a certain dollar value? And then you do have to recognize that you've got to give face time to a bigger ticket item. Well, there's no doubt that the first stage is a conversation through the actual text, but you want to move somebody from that to a phone call. No doubt about it. It's a you nice talk about bridge. humanizing the sale process yes. generally. Yes. So one step removed online versus... Yes, the side. idea is to build trust on, on a website through a conversation. Then you move them to a phone conversation to actually make the sale because then you, can, you can hear a voice, make a connection, and the trust happens there. Uh, what about the, the typical objections to all of this? If someone just says, look, times are tough, 
don't want your product. Yes. You know, how do you overcome that? Well, the old way of selling is try and overcome the objection, persuade them, convince them. But what we do instead is we unlock the game. We diffuse the pressure. So if someone says to us, "What's your what's your objection again?" Um, you know, I can't move forward. Our first response is, "That's not a problem." We just pull back. We don't push forward. And then we say, "Would you be open?" To a different concept you may not be exposed to now that could possibly help you. You say that straight away, or yes. when you say pull back? You say, it's not a problem. We let it breathe, let it like some pause, they, then they pause, and we say, would you be open? That's a key word we just figured out. Would you be open to a new perspective that you may not have now? And that begins to make them think about, well, maybe I will be. So that diffuses the objection and reopens it again. Well, for you out there, if you are open to hearing more of Ari, you can do just that, because you're going to be speaking, what, at the Boom, Booming in the Bust yes. Symposium. It's www.boominginthebust.com.au. This is kicking off simultaneously Sydney, Melbourne and Brisbane yes. from June the 19th to the 21st. Absolutely. So you will be up there yes. doing your stuff. We do appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for coming in. All the sure. best. And that is on the record for this week. We are out of time. Thanks for your company. Back same time next week.